So this video is going to be about packing efficiency. So this just asks the question, how well do atoms pack into a unit cell? So this is related to density. If we can pack a lot of stuff in a very small space, we'll have a very dense material. Conversely, if we don't pack things very well into this space and there's a lot of empty space, we'll have a very low density material. Let's see how that works with some examples with some tennis balls. So imagine I were trying to pack these tennis balls together. So here are four of them. So you'll notice that in this particular arrangement, I've not done such a particularly good job because there's a big empty space right here that will be left. That empty space, I'll give you a name for that in a minute, but we could minimize that empty space by moving these tennis balls over a little bit. Now you'll see that there is still an empty space right there and right there, but it's much less than it was before. So we'd say this arrangement is packed more efficiently than the previous arrangement. Similarly, if I go to make another layer on top of this one, I would take my next tennis ball, and if I put it right here on top, you'll see that that's maybe not the best use of space. So if I want to minimize the empty space, then I want to fill in a little bit of this empty space right here. I could do that by putting this tennis ball in this little um, depression that's formed right here between the other three tennis balls, like that. And so that arrangement will be a little bit more um, tightly packed a little more efficient in the packing than the previous arrangement. So let's write down some definitions. First, the empty space in a uh, unit cell is called interstitial space. This actually refers to any empty space between um, any solid object, so it's sometimes used to talk about interstitial cells in biology or inter interstitial spaces in architecture um, and so forth. So an interstitial space is an empty space, and if we're talking about packing efficiency, we want to minimize that. So let's come up with a definition for packing efficiency. So we'd like a number, a metric, that we could use to measure how efficiently we've packed things. So one way of thinking about that is, can we calculate how effectively the space is used? So if all of the space is filled up with atoms, we would have 100% packing efficiency. So a way of defining packing efficiency, so I'll just abbreviate packing efficiency, PACF, is equal to the volume that's actually occupied by atoms in the unit cell, and we're going to divide that by the total volume of the unit cell. So if the unit cell was completely filled with atoms, if there were no little empty gaps, empty spaces, no interstitial spaces between them, then we would have 100% packing efficiency. But if atoms are modeled as little spheres, we'll never be able to pack them with 100% packing efficiency. So we multiply by 100 to convert this number into an efficiency. So let's think about how we might calculate a packing efficiency for some of the uh, cubic structures that we've been studying about. So let's look at simple cubic. So one thing we know about simple cubic is that in the simple cubic um, unit structure we have one atom per unit cell. We also know, I'll just draw a face of one of these unit cells, that we have one eighth of an atom on each corner, and so that the edge length right here, length, is equal to two times the radius of one of the atoms. So length is equal to 2r. So I can use this to figure out the packing efficiency. So first I can get the volume of the unit cell, the whole unit cell, by realizing that I've got a cube and the area of the volume of a cube is length times length times length, or length cubed, and I know what length is, it's 2r. So I've got 2r cubed, and so I can rewrite that. 2 cubed is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, so that's 8r cubed. So I'm going to write the volume of the unit cell, the whole unit cell, is that number. So now I need to find the volume that's actually occupied by atoms. 
So here's how you might do that. So I've got one atom in my unit cell because it's a simple cubic unit cell and I know that simple cubic unit cells only contain one atom per cell. So the volume occupied by atoms, I've got one atom and so I just need to multiply this by the volume of one atom. If I had two atoms or four atoms, I'd have to multiply by two or four here. One atom times the volume of one atom will give me but the volume of that unit cell that's actually occupied, filled up by the atoms. So here's how we calculate the volume of an atom. We're going to assume that the volume of an atom, we're just going to model an atom as a sphere. And so the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we get that from geometry. So now we can calculate packing efficiency, uh, percent efficiency, um, like this. So the volume of the uh, atoms, volume of occupied by atoms is 4 thirds pi r cubed, divided by 8 r cubed. That's the total volume of my unit cell. So remember, this is the volume occupied by atoms divided by the total volume of the unit cell. We're going to multiply that by 100 to create a packing efficiency. So notice that I've got an r cubed in the numerator and an r cubed in the denominator, so I can just cancel those out. And now I've got a little bit of a uh, math problem to calculate here. So I'll pull out my uh, trusty calculator and we'll calculate that. So let's see, 4 divided by 3, that's the 4 thirds. Um, then we're going to multiply that by pi times um, pi, there it is, equals that. And then we need to divide that by 8, equals that, and multiply that by 100. And so we get a number that's about 52.4%. So of the total space in a simple cubic unit cell, 52.4% is actually occupied by, um, by atoms. So and if you look up in your textbook, it will give you the packing efficiencies for body-centered cubic and face-centered cubic as well, and those will be calculated in a similar way. So we can calculate the packing efficiency for all of these cells. You will find when you look up these numbers that the face-centered cube is packed as tightly as you can possibly pack spheres. So this is what we call a closest pack structure. Because it has the highest packing efficiency possible when packing spheres. So that's a little bit about packing efficiency.